So I hope no. Um, we have quite a few people on here. So what I'm going to ask for questions is that we wait till the end. I'm hoping I cover 99% of your questions and I will stay on after. You can also put them in the chat, but I'm going to be talking and I apologize for that for probably about 10 minutes straight about the program. Could even take 15. We'll see. And then we'll open up for questions, especially if the questions you think are something that everybody would be interested in hearing the answer to. But with that, um, welcome again, I'm Kate Greeley, and I'm gonna share my screen to start sharing some information about this exciting program we have here at the Leadership Foundation. All right, I think. Uh, okay. Uh. This is not moving the way I wanted. My apologies. So the Leadership Foundation sits under the umbrella of the chamber, the Denver Metro Chamber of Commerce. Leadership Denver started in 1974, which makes this class graduating in June the 50th class. We will be celebrating our 50th anniversary in, on June 14th and then a variety of activities through the remainder of the year. With 50 years under our belt, we have over 3,000 alumni and we are trying to gather them all for our upcoming celebrations. Um, our purpose here is to support the civic growth of current Colorado leaders so they understand the intricacies, perspectives, and intersections of business, government, and nonprofits in some of our most challenging problems in the Denver metro region. One second here. I am gonna move a screen so I can see everything. Um, our goal here is that participants will analyze Denver Metro Civic issues and compare perspectives to understand the complexities of our region. They'll use the Colorado Civic DNA framework, which is on our website, to apply their learnings and make positive community impact through a small group project. Who is this program best suited for? Usually our applicants are leader, um, is they're established professionals who have a track record of giving back and can commit to engaging in the program over 11 months. So this is an 11 month program. I'm gonna get in logistics in a minute, but it will run from August 2024 to June, 2025. And I beg all of you to check your calendars to make sure the dates work because we do have some attendance requirements. What are some of our components? Our components are we do site visits. We do those for a couple of reasons. One, to get behind the scenes of some of our innovators and to show us what on the ground leadership looks like so that we don't sit in theory in one room all day, but we instead get to see leadership at all level levels. We hear about policy impacting these issues, both current policy and past. We try to gain multiple perspective on issues. We have activities small group discussion, journal reflections, experts from business, government, nonprofit. We try to come at everything from the diversity of speaker, speakers and an equity lens. Our outside components. So we talk about our, an 11 month program and a time commitment, but please know outside of class, you will be assigned to a mayor's challenge project. And that is an outside of class component. You'll also have civic DNA conversations. And those are what we would consider civic conversations with a small group of your class. And then there's pre-read materials prior to our classes. Here's um, topic samples. I call them samples because we will have some change possibly. What is consistent though throughout our program are orientation in August, the retreat in September, and the graduation in June. The topics in between those bookends, maybe education, healthcare, environment, housing, basic needs, policy, public safety. We leave some of our options open. And the reason that we do that is so that if there's something that happens in the city, the country or the world, we can address that. And we don't have all of our days stacked. Instead, we have some flexibility. Here's some logistics. So our calendar and the class days are on the website. Uh, once you hit on the apply button, you see a calendar pop up. First of all, the application deadline is June 3rd at 11.59 p.m. And I beg you all to not hit the button at 11.59 p.m. 
or midnight, but it is open now. It's been open for eight months. So if after this you decide you're interested, please start your application process. It is, um, it I won't say lengthy, but you have to fill out some essay questions and put some thought behind it. So it's not something you start on June 3rd at 11.50 and fill in your name. We ask you some real thoughtful questions that then we share with the group that interviews you. So going on to interviews, our interviews this year are June 24th to 27th. They are all in person. We don't op uh, offer an online version or virtual version. And then decisions on the class are shared in mid-July with the class starting on August 2nd. I do not do the interviews myself. I have over a hundred alumni that come back to do the interviews and the interviews are held here at the chamber. You have the option to sign up for a time. So we have three full days of interviews from eight to five with four and five different rooms going. So we can usually accommodate most things. Our retreat is September 6th and 7th in Florissant, Colorado, the nature place. And when are our classes, they are the first Friday of the month from 8.30 to 5. And that's important to know because sometimes I'll have people ask, can we finish earlier? Can we this? You will get into these topics and you'll realize sometimes we just scratch the surface, even though we're together from 8.30 to 5. Those, again, are going to be at a variety of places throughout the city. So the price for the program is $4,200, and we do have scholarships available. When you are filling out your application, please uh, signify in there if you're looking for a scholarship. It will not impede acceptance to the class in any way. So please make sure you hit the button if there is a uh, if you have need, because what I do then is I budget it and I can't come back later with someone who says, oh, wait, I didn't want to hit the button. I didn't think I'd be accepted. So please make sure you're being honest. It will, again, not impede any acceptance. The program is a competitive program, we expect between, uh, I would say 80 and 120 applicants, and we choose 65. If for some reason you're not chosen this year, please come back. Um, people will apply year after year. So we're, we hope to make it a welcoming experience so that you do come back and apply again. Attendance, we have 12 total days. We have 11 months, but because of the retreat is a two day one, we're together for 12 full days. And there is a attendance requirement that you don't miss more than two. And that's why I ask you to check the calendar. I also realize life happens and things come up in our life, but you hold a coveted position and space in this class in Denver. And we ask that you take it seriously and commit. Uh, class locations, there are various sites throughout the Denver region. We will be moving throughout. Sometimes we move throughout the day, but we always make it work with either carpooling. If you don't have transportation, we can do carpooling, we can do public transportation, and we do have even some people that ride their bikes to our locations. So we will always make it work. I never want um, the price of the program or transportation to be a barrier for anybody. Okay, I am gonna mute myself for a moment. I'm gonna have my colleague Anna talk about some other things. So if you've heard some things, you thought, I'm not sure this is the program for me. Anna's gonna share um, some of the other things that we have going on at the foundation. Can you hear me now? Cool, all right. So my name is Ana Ibanez. I work with Kate um, and, and I am the program support specialist for the majority of our programs here. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about what we have if um, you feel like, you know, maybe LD is not where you see yourself in the future. Well, we do have Access Denver, which is two days. It's literally LD, but compressed in two days where we go through a lot of our topics. And um, like I said, it's in two days. So it's kind of um, fast paced. Impact Denver is a six month half day program. It happens twice a year from January to June and in July, to December. Um, if you're feeling like you want to get your foot into the door of um, civic engagement, um, really upcoming, then Impact Denver is definitely also a great option. And Leadership Denver, I mean, Leadership Fellows is also um, another one that we have for six months. We meet once every, I believe, every first Friday or third Friday, third mm -hmm. Friday, third Friday of each month from um, May all the way till December. And it's all about introspection and personal growth. And um, and it's fairly smaller, which is like around 25, but correct me if I'm wrong, Kate, um, it's more of a leadership, yeah, introspection. Mm -hmm. So 
yes, those are our three. Um, we do look forward to seeing you, any, everyone in any of our programs. It's really fun. I've been in this position for two years, so I've seen a lot of growth and a lot of impact as well. So we look forward to having you. Thank you, Anna. Questions? You can use the chat, you can come off of mute. Anything I said that needs clarification in terms of our outcomes, our purpose, how many we accept into the program, our pricing, please open up to anything that you may mm -hmm. have not heard. Kate, would you want to give us some examples of recent community projects? Oh, sure. So um, currently, Mayor Mike Johnson came into the class, spoke to the seven biggest issues facing Denver, and they're very large. And I'll give you an example, like affordable housing. And he throws it out to a small group. People have a choice what group they're going to join. And then they their job is to meet with people currently working on the issue to find the gaps. So that's an example of how it works. They have months and they they propose the project, their proposal back to Mayor Johnson in June. So this year's topic are public safety, um, overdose prevention, public safety, uh, police retention and recruitment, affordable housing, traffic deaths, and vision zero. Hillary, you're putting me on the spot. Now I'm like, what are our other ones? There's seven. So he proposes, uh, my goal next year is maybe to involve um, a couple other mayors right outside of Denver and see if they also have projects so we can learn about the differences that our, the municipalities are struggling with. How many scholarships are available? Um, I don't have a certain number. What I do is I have a certain amount and I don't ever, um, I mean, I know that amount, but until the class is selected, then I divvy up the money that way. So please ask for what you need. I will tell you it's very rare for me to be able to scholarship anyone over half. That doesn't mean I can't do it. It's not um, because of the amount of the asks that come in. I usually don't scholarship more than half. But if there's an extenuating circumstance, please share. Thank you. Hi. I have a quick question, um, and I, I missed the first five minutes. I apologize for that, and just tell me I'm being dumb if uh, you're answering something again. Uh, but my question is, what type of backgrounds do the people in the programs typically have? Um, and I ask because I attended a networking event with a bunch of alumni from the program, and the four or five I had my first conversations with all came from large corporations, and that's not my background. So I was just curious what's the typical backgrounds you see. And I see someone, as you were asking that, Charles, I saw someone's question pop up as well about the split is generally 60 for profit, 40% nonprofit. Within that nonprofit would be government, could be educators. So it's, it's usually about a 60 40 split on for profit. With that, that doesn't mean large corporations. That could be a small business owner, it could be a consultant. They would be in the for profit bucket. Um, when we talk about titles, people really are not um, selected by title. I think sometimes people believe they are, and they're really not. It's about people who want to learn, who want to figure out the web of all of our issues, and then have impact on the community. And the age range this year goes from 28 to 62 Last year, it went from 26 to 68. So nobody is too old. Nobody is too young. And the titles really range. There, there's a, a broad spectrum. Um, some of my youngest will be my most powerhouse folks sometimes. So there's not a title that gets you in the door. And honestly, your work does not get you in the door. When we ask you questions at the interview, it's really about your community engagement and maybe some about your work. I hope that helps answers it, Charles, but there's not a profile. When we said who um, is accepted, it's really people that want to continue to learn about the civic issues and take that forward in some way. I have a question about the about the uh, mayor's project. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure I understand the flow. So um, the mayor, you know, comes and speaks about like the top seven or so priorities, you know, 
for the city. And then um, we, we join one and then a, a group goes out and kind of does some thinking and some research and then decides what to like hone in and focus on, or is it more a broad, a broad kind of like project presented back? I will tell you this, there's very few guardrails on this project. Okay. <laughs> okay. And, and part of it is this is where we really practice our leadership skills. So this right. is not a leadership development program. We're not doing workshops on public speaking or that sort of thing. The leadership comes out through this project. So a big thing is presented and we will have groups. I usually beg groups though to not start a nonprofit. And that's only because they would have to sustain that for a very long time. Sometimes people will do a one-off event, um, an art show around youth mental health. Sometimes people have changed charters in the city language. It really runs the gamut. And I put very few guardrails on how big and how small, but I do have previous classes come in and present. And I usually try to find a large one and a small one. So you get an idea of past projects, but it's not something once I let you loose, it is, I control it very little. And it's not something either that the mayor is coming in to necessarily accept because sometimes the projects have already taken place. Sometimes right. they're proposing to him. I think that the city should do this. So it really runs a wide gam um, gamut. That's great. And I guess it allows everyone to explore the issue deeply. Yeah. And sometimes people will choose an issue they work within. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they will choose something completely opposite because they're like, my day is filled with this and I don't want to be filled with this, but I'll be a resource to that group. But I want to learn something new because it's really the time to hone in on one of these topics really deep. Thank you. Yep, I see someone says, how many funders and foundations in former classes? I do not have that answer. We had someone from the Mortgage Family Foundation, um, Betcher in the past. I don't have an exact number. But again, the split is generally 40-60. My job after you all interview is to create a diverse class in many ways, uh, by industry, by gender, by race, by political perspective, my job is that everyone can have a hear multiple perspectives. And so that's my job after the interview takes place. How is the tuition used? The tuition is used by um, the retreat, by the experiences, occasionally speakers, and then food. And all right, and if someone has their hand up, feel free to come up. Okay. I'm gonna dive in, I hope you don't mind. Um, Kate, my name is Alana Plaz, um, and I'm joined by my colleague, Lauren, at GBSM. And I wanted to, first of all, express gratitude for the webinar and for the idea of bringing in other mayors from surrounding municipalities, because our issues aren't, they don't exist in silos. But my question is more about the point that you made early on about how um, Leadership Denver is focused on established professionals who have a track record of giving back. Do you have a little more detail on what you actually mean by that in terms of previous experience and civic engagement and giving back to the city or other cities? You know, I, again, I don't have a specific profile, but this isn't a class usually. That's why Anna pre presented on Impact Denver. If you are unfamiliar with the current issues or you've never volunteered or you've never served on a board, that would be an impact one. But if you have had some, I'll say this, if you can identify how your leadership within either your organization or your community has made a difference, you're probably set for Leadership Denver. So if you can answer that question, my leadership has made a difference in this realm, in this way, this would be more of your class. If you're unable to answer that, I would say, you know what, impact is probably a better route. Impact Denver is also not a competitive program. When you apply, you get in. So sometimes people will choose impact for various things. One, they haven't had the leadership of change. The other one would be um, the time commitment because Impact Denver is half the time and half the price. And sometimes it's that it's not doesn't have the competitive nature to it. I hope that helped answer the question of past commitments. It did. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Karen, you have a question? Yeah, my question, I, you answered part of it, but it was about those other projects and, and those other opportunities, the 
they they are in an application process or they they are. So you apply for our okay. other programs, but it's not a competitive one. You don't interview. Okay. So Access Denver is our two-day program. And sometimes we'll get folks who are interested in Leadership Denver and then hear about the level of commitment of the 11 months of an outside project. And Access Denver will give them similar information, but in a very quick way, like Anna had said, in a two-day one. So you, you apply to all our programs, but Leadership Denver is our only one that has an acceptance process and an interview process. Okay. And you did say they all have fees? They do. Yep. They're all on the website too. There's okay. a variety of fee, but, um, small registration fees and then some tuition and all of our programs have scholarships. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. they, they ask only partial scholarships. Yes, only partial scholarships. It would be very rare for me to give a full scholarship or whomever asked that question. It doesn't mean that it's unheard of, but it's not our usual practice to give a full scholarship. Any other questions for me? I would hope from here, you can do a few things and get on our website. I can also have Anna, if she would throw our um, link to the website, even though you probably all have it because you got on here. Um, but if it's in the chat and you are interested in applying, you can start looking at what the application looks like. It does look like, Karen, going back to one of your questions, it does look different in the other programs. Our essay questions are different and Access Denver doesn't have any essay questions. Um, do you need any support? No, you do not need any recommendations. Um, you don't need to be nominated or recommended, nor I will tell you this. I just say you don't, you don't have to spend your time having your friends send me recommendations because truly it is in the hands of the alumni and interviewers. So I just don't want you to feel like you need to go find people that will send me an email. If you want to, I don't mind getting them, but I'm just going to say like, I think I would put, if you had to put your eggs in a basket, it would be on the application because the interviewers do read those prior to meeting you. So when you show up, they have background on you. Um, so no, you do not need any letters of recommendation, nor do you need um, any nominations. So again, thank you for joining us. Uh, you can reach out to me at any time if you have follow-up questions. You're also welcome to stay on here. I will sit on here for about another 10 or 15 minutes if there's questions that come to you. I just hope that you will all apply. Um, I am an alumni myself of 2015. At the time I was a high school principal and that was not an easy day to get off, but it was life-changing because I knew my realm well. And to see all the other issues and how they impacted the education world was super insightful. So I hope that you will all apply. And again, reach out with any questions and I will stay on the line. I had one question. Sure. Um, with regards to the not missing more than two sessions, is there a, a requirement in terms of timing of notice for missing those sessions or no I just ask the people let me know so I don't because we plan food I plan small group That's interactions right. so I um I would say you know anytime you know ahead of time of course we always have sickness or something that comes up last minute but if you have knowledge of trips or times you'll be out but we do really stick to our two days because okay. it's a competitive program we right. really ask people to look at that calendar and hold it also to have your employer sign off to say, yes, you can, if you are, unless you're self-employed to say, yes, you can miss a, a day of work a month. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Thank, yeah. Thank you for asking. Sure. Thank you. Thanks, Anna. Thank you. Thanks, Hillary. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. We can stop the recording.